Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. And today it's time for us to take a look at our favorite high-end EDC pocket knives from Wee Knife Company that you can get right now in 2020. Let's check them out. Now there's a lot of import knife companies out there these days, and while I like to buy American wherever I can, the days when made in China meant not very good are long gone. And Wee Knife Company is one of the manufacturers that's proving it. Now they used to do OEM work for other companies, but now they're turning out knives of their own designs and they've quickly made a name for themselves by producing solid blades that are right up there with some of the best production companies anywhere. And we're going to start with a model that kind of put them on the map for a lot of people, and I include myself in that statement. This double helix model was the first knife that I ever saw from Wee Knife Company. It's definitely a head turning design because of the way they've done this handle, and it really shows what their factories can be capable of. Now this knife features a crossbar style lock, but instead of having internal springs, we get these externally visible springs that anchor at the back end of the titanium handle. You can even see them move as you actuate that lock bar. Now that's not the only thing that differentiates their version of this lock from other crossbar locks like the Axis lock, but something that's unique to Wii's version is that it actually holds the blade closed until you pull that lock bar back. You can pull on that blade all you want, but it's not going to come open unintentionally. It actually locks the blade closed as well as open. That makes it a great safety feature when you're carrying it in your pocket or if you have it free floating in a bag somewhere. Now the blade itself is S35VN. It's two-tone on this particular one, but there are a few different finishes and handle colors available. And this particular one is priced at $285 right now. Now as cool as that knife is, it is a little bit of an outlier in Wii's lineup because of course they are more well known for their titanium frame lock flippers. That style is all the rage these days and has been for a number of years. And one of their releases that lives in that format from earlier this year that's really caught my eye is the Scopio, priced around $260 right now. What I like about this knife is it's not ostentatious. It's got a nice clean profile. And if they weren't careful, that could come off as simple, but the refinement is definitely there. And the compound grinds on this blade mix things up just a little bit enough so that it's not a plain looking design. Those compound grinds don't get in the way of the functionality either because that shape of that blade is excellent and high performance thanks to the use of CPM 20 CV blade steel. You got a nice continuous curve to the edge itself and a very usable point for every day to day tasks. Now the flipping action on this knife is great. As with most of the knives in Wii's lineup, you've got ball bearings in the pivot for very smooth action. And what sets this knife apart from a lot of the other titanium frame lock flippers these days is the handle itself, which kind of mimics the look of an integral folder. We do have two sides. This is not a single piece of metal, but there's no outside screws holding it together so that the clean lines of the design are maintained as much as possible. If you want a flipper with a bit more attitude, we've got the Malice, which is a collaboration with Ferrum Forge. If you're familiar with their style, you'll definitely recognize that immediately with this knife. And these start right around 275 bucks right now. The spec list has all of Wii Knife's greatest hits. You got a titanium frame, ball bearing pivot for the flipper. And in this case, we've got M390 steel and about three and a half inches of reach and a nice flat grind. Now you can get it with a satin finish on the handle or the cool flamed titanium on this one I'm holding. But the best part about this knife is the comfort. The handles are nice and broad and they're curved over and radiused very nicely so that it's very easy to use even under heavy strain and it really lets you put that wide and powerful blade to use. Then when you're done powering through your cuts, you can choke up on the full size finger choil right there for a bit more fine control. Now switching gears a little bit, we've got the Angst, a Justin Lundquist design starting at about 140. And unlike the larger Malice, this knife is ultra light and agile, can weigh as little as 1.8 ounces depending on which version you pick. And the blade itself has got the precision to back up the agile handling of the knife itself. We've got a dagger profile, which of course is great for piercing, and they've even got some milled grooves here at the thumb pad area to add some grip when you're doing that. But it's great at more than just that. That shape also creates a really efficient cross section when you're slicing through material. It is single edged though, so you're not gonna have to worry about that when you're maneuvering the steel, which is in this case S35VN. Now it flips open just as well as the frame locks here, but we've got a liner lock on this particular design and it's nested into the G10 or carbon fiber handles depending on which you choose and that gives it a really premium feel. 
that premium treatment continues with the handles. Not only do you get a premium look because of that, but they've got a nice radius to these handles too. So just like that Malice, they're very comfortable in the hand and you can really push it hard when you need to. Now, in addition to your garden variety titanium frame lock flipper, I mentioned integrals earlier and Wee Knife really has become known for executing integral frame models very well. This knife, the Draken, may not have been their first integral. I'm not actually uh, sure if it was or not, but this is definitely the one that got them recognized, I think. And the reason it stands apart are the heavily milled dragon scales that cover each side of the knife. The precision is top notch, and you can even see that pattern continue seamlessly onto the lock bar insert here at the end of the lock bar itself. But despite that texture, this is still a nice, comfortable knife. You can see the spine there. Uh, as it wraps around the back is perfectly smooth and it really does feel good in the hand locks in quite nicely without being so aggressive that it's going to cause heavy blistering on this knife we've got an m390 blade and it also features an element that you see on a bunch of different models in Wii's lineup where the sharpened edge near the tip gets a little bit thicker for more strength but it's still razor sharp all along the edge that blade length comes in at about three and a half inches here as well. And like most of their models, you can get a number of different handle and blade finish combinations. This knife definitely flips open just as well as the non-integral flippers, thanks to a very similar pivot construction. And this one even opens easily two-handed as well, thanks to the swedge that runs along the length of the blade. You can open it like that, or it even works well as a thumb opener if you pinch the blade cut out and rotate it open that way. Now, just as impressive in their integral lineup is the Synergy 2, which starts at 329. Now, the original Synergy knife was actually a speed tech design by Jim O'Young, and it was first released in 1999. It was actually the first 3D machined integral handled folder, and it really set the template that some companies still can't pull off these days. We Knife Company, however, can pull it off, and their version is fantastic. Now, of course, a few things have changed from the original, which was aluminum and used a button lock and thumb stud for opening, whereas this is, as you'd expect, a titanium frame lock flipper. They've also added the Tonto blade option, which I've got here, in addition to also keeping the original trailing point blade profile. And you can get it in M390 or the awesome looking Damasteel that I've got on this one. What I love most though, and you're probably sensing a theme by now, is the contouring which you can see from above. We've got a really nice hand conforming shape and that signature wrap around from the integral construction. Even more so than the Malice from earlier, this is a greatly comfortable design and you can of course get it with or without inlays in a few different configurations. The most innovative integral they make right now though is the Arrakis designed by Elijah Isham. And this model is sort of their master thesis in engineering and construction and they start at 3.30. In this case, we have what I like to call a split integral design that's more impressive the more you actually look at it. I chose the titanium and carbon fiber version here, although there are a few other variants, but I picked this one so that you can try and see the two different parts and how they interact just a little bit better. The titanium portion still wraps around the spine, as you can see, but it only happens here at the back. You essentially have two arms that extend forward to either side of the pivot with a piece of carbon fiber on each side that sort of acts like a bridge and connects to the titanium structure at the back and terminates here at the front near the stop pin for the blade. It's very cool in person, definitely really nice to look at, but it is, I find, kind of hard to describe. So hopefully it comes across in the pictures what's going on here. Now they've kept a skeletonized look to the handle so you can kind of appreciate the mechanics of what's going on. And that aesthetic carries through to the blade itself, which in the open position makes it look almost like a leaping sandworm from its namesake planet of Dune. The good looks combined with high performance steel, M390 or Dama steel again, which when you put it all together, it's definitely a statement piece first and foremost, but it's still a useful knife when you actually need to cut something. Now I saved my personal favorites for last, and there's two knives I wanna show you now. The first is the Deacon, which starts at 253. It is a frame lock flipper, but we've got a pair of carbon fiber overlays that kind of create a bolstered look. And this gold anodized version is the best looking one to my eyes. The size and style here is just right for a gentleman's knife. We've got a three and a quarter inch blade with a highly usable drop point shape, flat ground from M390. It's got a fine satin finish and even a nicely crowned spine. That's gonna make it one, very nice to look at, and also very comfortable when you go to use it. We've got just enough handle length to get a good grip on the knife, even with my slightly larger than average hands, without it being too large in the pocket when it's folded up. 
And again, like a lot of the picks that I chose for this list, you've got a great contour to the handles themselves instead of them being flat. So the comfort is there in spades when you need it. It's just an overall extremely satisfying knife to operate. Craftsmanship is top notch and the style I think is undeniable. Finally, probably my absolute favorite in the lineup is the Kite Fin, which was released earlier this year. It is the perfect gentleman's knife for less than 160 bucks. It's a titanium frame lock flipper and you can get it with various titanium or carbon fiber fronts. But in my opinion, the carbon fiber is the way to go. It keeps the weight way down. The knife is barely over two ounces and they're contoured as opposed to the titanium, which is left flat. So the carbon fiber is even more comfortable. The three and a quarter inch blade is nice and thin with a hollow grind and a very thin edge. It cuts very well and the edge should last thanks to the S35 VN steel. And the pocket clip is almost completely deep carry and thanks to some differing finishes there and some drilled and chamfered holes, it feels fully integrated as part of the design and not just an afterthought. This is one of those knives that didn't jump off the page for me when I saw pictures, but that's because it really has to be held in the hand to be fully appreciated. I can tell you it's something special. And as of right now, off of this table, this would be the knife that I put in my pocket. All right, that's all I've got to show you today. Would love to hear what you thought of these cool knives. Make sure to let us know down in the comments. And if you want to get your hands on one of these cool knives, we'll make sure to leave links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. And while you're over there, make sure you sign up for our knife rewards program, because if you're going to buy one of these cool knives, you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.